What's going on aimers? It's your boy Fatal and today I'm going to be showing you guys five things that you're doing wrong when you're doing your aiming routines. Whether you're using Kovac 2.0, Aim Lab, 3D Aim Trainer, every single person who first gets into aim training is always doing something wrong. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first mistake I see a lot of people make is their grinding, tile frenzy, and grid shot. Now don't get me wrong, these are very very good warm-ups, but they are also more benchmarks than they are anything else. They're really good if you do it for like five minutes before you get into your actual routine, but you don't want them to be in your routine. The reason you don't wanna grind these scenarios is because there are much more beneficial ones out there. The best way I can explain it is if you were to do other exercises, like for example, wide wall three targets voltaic, that would help you improve your flicking aim, your micro adjustments and your speed. And if you were to take that improvement and go over to tile frenzy, you would notice that you also improved in tile frenzy. However, if you were to do tile frenzy and you were to go over to wide wall three targets voltaic, you wouldn't improve in the wide wall three targets. And as you get better them, you think that you're getting better overall, but you're not. And I promise you that you're not. They are benchmarks more than anything. I'm not gonna tell you not to do them because they are fun, trust me. I've done them a lot, but if you're truly looking to improve, there are more valuable exercises that are going to be more worth your time. The number two mistake that I see most people do, and this is going to be geared more towards tracking exercises, uh, this is going to be to react, don't predict. I remember when I first started on PC and when I would see all these professional Apex players, it looks like they can predict exactly where the target is going, where the enemy is going, and that's why they're able to stay on target for so long. What you're actually seeing is they're reacting, but their adjustment speed is just phenomenal. They've done this so much and for so long that their speed and correction time is so fast, it looks like they're predicting exactly where the target's gonna go, but they're still just reacting. So for example, I'll give you a really bad example on what it looks like to kind of predict. This example might look kind of ugly because I'm forcing myself into a bad habit, but you overall will get the point so as you can see right here i'm more trying to predict and predicting is like as a target moves one way you kind of get scared that you're not going to stay on target so you kind of react in a negative way and you predict that it's going to go back the other way your cursor is going to be all over the place you're not going to be on target as long as you think you are whereas reactive tracking is more you're not moving your cursor until you see the target move so for example like right here i'm able to stay on the target a lot more frequently because i'm forcing myself and trying to focus as intensely as as possible on the target making sure that I don't move my mouse until the target moves so I'm trying to stay on and then as it moves in one direction I flick back to it as fast as I can and then if it moves again I flick back to it and this is how you're going to improve your tracking and it's also going to improve your reaction speed as well the number three mistake that I see some people make is there's not a balance of speed and accuracy and what I mean by this is when a lot of people are doing their clicking and their flicking exercises they're solely focused on the speed at which they're doing them and that can create a lot of bad habits so to counteract that here's what i recommend you can put on some music while you're doing your training or you can go to google and look up metronome and you can use the bpm slider to kind of help you set a certain pace for yourself in order to force yourself to increase your speed but you only want to do that for like a couple of minutes and then you want to go back to the aim trainer and do it with no noise just so you can kind of aim dynamically without setting a certain pace if you're using the bpm or fast paced music it's really good to help you improve your speed but you don't always just want to focus on speed when you're playing in game you're not always going to have music in your ear especially if you're trying to compete at a high level so you kind of want to train your brain and your mechanic abilities to be able to perform at a high speed if needed but you don't always want to have to stay at that high speed constantly pushing yourself to perform at the highest speed possible can be not only draining for your mentality but for your physical ability as well but i do promise you that if you use the music or the metronome slider to improve your speed you will notice a difference so i had to go get a haircut so if you notice that, um, yeah, just ignore it. Anyway, the third mistake that you're making is that you're probably aim training for way too long. You don't need to be doing this for longer than an hour a day, kind of max. Like usually I'll do like an hour and a half, but that's just because I enjoy doing it. Improving your aim at a solid core is really, really good. However, if you're trying to improve at actual video games, like it's better spent in those games. Like your time is better spent more often playing the game rather than spending it in Kovacs or Aim Lab. Some people just want to be cracked aimers. Kovacs and Aim Lab are technically games themselves. And if that's your goal, then by all means, have at it. Play it for like two to three hours if you fucking want to. However, if you want to get good at Valorant, if you want to get good at Apex, 
keep it minimal. I would say like hour and a half max, but most, most people will say, you know, about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. It all kind of depends on the person and depends on what you're trying to achieve. The fourth mistake you're probably making is that you're on the wrong sensitivity. For a lot of people, it's preference. However, if you are a strictly wrist aimer, you run the risk of damaging your wrist. You don't have to run a super low sensitivity like myself. I think I run 400 DPI, 0.566 in game in Valorant. In Kovacs, that translates to 1.8 at 400 DPI. Now I use this just because I do enjoy using my arm and then my wrist for the micro adjustments. However, a lot of people think that having a high DPI and having a high sensitivity, it's flashy, it's just the way to go. And yes, while it does look flashy because you're moving super fast and if you hit a shot, it does look pretty insane, you're taking that chance of damaging your wrist and to me, that's just not worth it. If you're trying to truly get better, if you're trying to make a name for yourself, go pro just get really really good you don't want to make things harder on yourself down the line so I prefer and recommend a lower sensitivity it doesn't have to be super low but just low enough to where you have to use your arm a little more than your wrist to make bigger movements I do want to add that if you do lower your sensitivity at first there will be some tracking scenarios that will be a little more difficult however it will make you a lot more comfortable and accurate when it comes to hitting your micro adjustment shots so to give an example for myself Clicking scenarios come much easier to me because of my low sensitivity. However, when I'm doing reactive tracking, especially, the target is moving constantly back and forth, and it's just really hard for me to readjust that. You can eventually pick up the reactive speed where it doesn't hinder you as much as it was before. However, at first, it is gonna take a minute to get used to. The number five mistake you're making when you're aim training is overall just gonna be your health. You're not eating properly, you're not drinking enough water, your posture is bad, your arm is too high or too low. Having your arm at a comfortable, like just below chest level can be really, really good for being comfortable and being more consistent when it comes to aiming. You definitely wanna practice having good posture, you wanna eat correctly, go to the gym, work out. FPS games are not purely mental and there has to be a good mind to muscle connection. And if you take care of those muscles, you eat properly, give them proper nutrients, you go to the gym and work out and increase your strength that mind to body connection is just overall going to be much better your reactivity speed is going to be better your focus will become better and overall it's just going to help you improve so yeah those are my tips as i've been aim training for the past year these are the things that i've noticed that have made the biggest difference for myself if you guys can think of anything that i miss or something that you would have preferred to be mentioned in this video go ahead and drop a comment hell it might even give me a good idea for a future video i really hope these tips helped you guys take these points into consideration i promise that if you do your research and you put in the time you will improve fast you just got to stop making the simple mistakes if you guys ever have any questions for me, you're more than welcome to pop into my stream. I stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday on Twitch. But other than that, I really appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.